What's going on everyone? I have another filing to talk about. This one's out of SIBO as well and it's regarding block trade record keeping. This is CFE 2021-009. Let's go and take a look. So the purpose of this one, CFE Rule 415, which is titled Block Trades, governs block trades and CFE products. Rule 415E currently requires that each CFE trading privilege holder or TPH, that is a party to a block trade to record certain details regarding the transaction on an order ticket. Those details include, number one, the contract, including the expiration, number two, the number of contracts traded, number three, the price of execution or premium, number four, the time of execution, number five, the arrangement time, if any, number six, the identity of a counterparty, number seven, the transaction is a block trade, number eight, if applicable, the account number of the customer for which the block trade was executed, and nine, if applicable, the expiration, strike price, and type of option, whether it's a put or call, in the case of an option. Now, purpose continued. The proposed rule change proposes to revise Rule 415E to limit the application of the block trade order ticket requirement to any TPH that acts as an agent for a block trade, and to no longer apply that requirement to any TPH that is a party to a block trade in a principal capacity and not acting in the capacity as an agent. The proposed rule change also proposes to add a requirement to Rule 415E that each TPH involved in any block trade either maintain records, evidence, and compliance with the criteria set forth in Rule 415, or be able to obtain those records from its customers involved in the block trade. Finally, consistent with these changes, the proposed rule change proposes to revise a current cross-reference in Rule 415E to an order ticket in this context by referring to the order ticket as any required order ticket instead of the current description of the order ticket referred to in the preceding sentence. Purpose continued. Additionally, the proposed rule change proposes to make clear that any TPH involved in a block trade must maintain records of the block trade, evidencing compliance with the criteria in Rule 415, or be able to obtain those records from its customer involved in the block trade. Block trades and ECRP transactions are the two primary types of off-exchange transactions that are permitted under CFE rules. Given the similarities between these two types of transactions, block trades and ECRP transactions are subject to similar record keeping and reporting requirements. Accordingly, CFE believes that it is appropriate to align the order ticket requirement applicable to block trades under Rule 415 with the corresponding order ticket requirement applicable to the ECRP under Rule 414, and that doing so will make it easier for TPHs to comply with the exchange's record keeping requirements. So we're trying to get some more compliance to the rules. You hear that, Wilson? Or uh, <laughs> Morgan, my guy, no one's enforcing the rules. Well, they're trying to get them enforced. So that should be good news. Now, specifically, Rule 415H requires that the notification to the exchange of a block trade shall include, number one, whether the block trade is a single leg transaction, a transaction in a spread, or a transaction in a strip. Number two, the contract identifier or product and contract expiration for a future or product, expiration, strike price, and type of option, put or call, in the same case of an option. Also price and quantity of the block trade and whether the block trade is a buy or sell. Number three, the time of execution. Number four, the arrangement time. Number five, executing firm ID or EFID. We have account, clearing corporation, origin code, customer type, indicator code, and any other information required by the exchange. Additionally, among other information that the exchange requires to be included as part of the notification to the exchange of a block trade is the identity of the counterparty. Now, basically, in essence, the exchange believes that the proposed rule change is consistent with Section 6B of the Act in general and furthers the objectives of Section 6B16 and 6B57. In particular, in that it is designed, number one, to enable the exchange to enforce compliance by its TPHs and persons associated with its TPHs with the provisions of the rules of the exchange. Number two, to prevent fraudulent and manipulative acts and practices, to promote just and equitable principles of trade, to remove impediments to and perfect the mechanism of a free and open market and a national market system, and in general, to protect investors and the public interest. So basically, that's all I have for you. This will be a proposed rule change, so it's not going to be implemented um, immediately or anything like that. It's going to have to go through the process. So as far as implementation, it could be 30 days from when this is published tomorrow. Have a good one.